hey guys welcome to another cooking episode today i'll be sharing my egusi soup recipe with you guys there are several ways to cook egusi soup but i'm going to be showing you this traditional method because it's my go-to egusi soup recipe i'm not really a fan of egusi soup but if i must eat it this is how best i enjoy it that's because it has this unique taste and it is medicinal because of a particular ingredient i'm going to be adding for my traditional egusi or melon soup recipe i've got melon which i've already grinded with my secret ingredient and here's my secret ingredient oziza seed i've got some cow head shaki and um, edo. I also have some smoked catfish. By now, you know I love smoked catfish a lot, and that's because of the flavor and the taste it adds to my soups. I've also got this dried salt water fish. It's also packed with a lot of flavor. Then I've got my stockfish head. We all know that stockfish also has a lot of flavor. Then I've got some pomo, some ground crayfish, some palm oil, blended fresh pepper, and then some Cameroon pepper flakes. You know me with Cameroon pepper. Then of course I've got an onion bulb, then some seasoning cubes and salt to taste. I told you guys of my secret ingredient, Oziza. I'm using both the leaves and the seeds. This is what makes the taste unique. And it is also medicinal because Oziza leaves is more of herbs than vegetable. For this reason, I will be adding some vegetables for vitamins, of course, and my vegetable of choice is Ugu. Feel free to use any vegetable of your choice. Without wasting much time, let's just dive straight into the cooking. I'll transform my pre-cooked meat into the pot, add both the stock fish and the dry fish, Throw in the pomo, add some palm oil, a cup of water, and then cover and allow to cook till the oil is done. One of the reasons this traditional egusi or melon soup stands out is the method of preparation. Back then at home, my mother would usually pound the already grinded egusi with onions in a mortar. But all thanks to this multifunctional food processor, I no longer have to go through that stress. I'll just transfer the grinded egusi to the food processor, chop my onions and add them, then just blend together for like 15 to 20 seconds, and my egusi dough is ready. At this time, what I have on the stove should be almost done. So, I'll just add the fresh pepper, the smoked catfish, and stir. Guys, I had to remove one of the smoked catfish because I realized the egusi was very small. Now, I'll begin to roll my egusi dough into small balls. Remember, I didn't add water. It's the moisture from the onions that helps form the dough. Guys, do you even know why I am making this bowls? Okay, it is so that the soup will have lumps. You know those types of lumps you bite into and you feel you're eating meat? <laughs> that's the lumps I am talking about. <laughs> Anyways, that's just on a lighter note. But seriously... It's just a method of preparation. All right, guys, this is what the goosey balls look like. I'm going to be adding them to the pot now. But I'm going to be doing that one at a time. I really wish these balls were going to remain this way in the soup. 
but unfortunately no way as it cooks it will gradually but not fully dissolve so that there can still be those lumps you can chew i'll add the ground crayfish the cameroon pepper flakes and cover while open the pods and give the soup a stir I realized the soup was too thick for my liking, so I added another cup of water to loosen it a bit. Covered and allowed to simmer for another 5 minutes. After a while, I opened the pot, added the ozizo leaves, but unfortunately, I didn't film where I was adding it because, in fact, I don't know what happened to my camera then. But, however, I added the ozizo leaves, and I did that because the ozizo seemed to be a little bit harder than the ubu leaves. So, I covered the pot and allowed it to simmer for exactly one minute. After that, I opened the pot again, stirred, and then added the ubu leaves. I stirred and then immediately brought it down because I didn't want my ugu leaves to be overcooked. And here you have it, my traditional egusi soup. Alright guys, I'm done making my traditional egusi soup. This is the way my mom taught me how to make egusi soup. Look at how it turned out. Wow, is it not colorful? It's beautiful guys. You want to be on this dining table with me right now because the aroma of this soup is in fact I wish you can I wish aroma is something you can see you just see it all over the house <laughs> excuse me <laughs> so guys you know I added um oziza seed and oziza leaf those are the two things that made this egusi soup different from the usual egusi soup you guys are familiar with Oziza is an herb I don't know what it's called in English it has its seed and it has its leaf just like any other vegetable but I think Oziza is more of herbs Oziza leaf is more of herbs than of vegetable don't forget I added both Oziza leaf and Oziza seed that's what makes the taste of this thing unique That unique taste. Try it guys. You know what I'm talking about. So I just go ahead and have mine with rice. I just feel like eating. I don't feel like swallowing anything today. I feel like taking rice. So I'm just gonna have it with plain boiled rice. Okay. Just wait for it. It's lovely. 
the thing about egosi soup is you can have it with just anything. You can have it with your a swallow, say fufu, gari, semo, whatever. You can also have it with rice and have it with yam. Just name it anything. You can have it with just anything. That is the peculiarity of egusi soup. Unlike raw soup, I can't have open soup with any other thing except swallow. But this, you can see I'm having it with rice and it's going just perfectly well. Guys, thank you for supporting me all the way. I love you so, so much and I appreciate it so, 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 so much. Let us have a residential nation here on YouTube streets. And I would love that. I would, I would gladly appreciate that. Thank you so much once again. If you have not subscribed, please do. Just hit the subscribe button and that's all. Also, hit the notification bell by the side of the subscribe button so you'll be notified each time I upload new videos. And guys, if you are subscribed, please and please, there's no need to hit the subscribe button again. That means you are unsubscribing. That means you no longer want to subscribe to my channel. Please guys, just subscribe once and that's all. What you need to do always is to give me thumbs up and to leave me comments in the comment section down below. Thank you so much guys. I'll see you in my next video. I love you. Bye-bye.